Hello everyone and welcome back to PC Retro Programmer. In the past few videos in this series we've been drawing ellipses and in the previous video we finally got all of this to work with the final thing being a reflection of the ellipse about the horizontal axis. We realized that all the points on the upper half of the ellipse are a reflection of the points on the lower half and so we can save ourselves a whole load of computation by drawing a point on the lower half at the same time as the corresponding point on the upper half. In fact, the only thing that differs between the two is the location in video RAM where the pixels are being written. All the rest of the computation remains the same. Now, we implemented this in the previous video. We were out of registers, so we had to allocate an additional word in memory to keep track of the difference in offset between the bottom half and the top half of the ellipse and we had to update that as we moved around the ellipse. But it all worked, and it's an obvious saving and an obvious win. It's much faster. We got to musing about whether or not we could do the same thing for a reflection about the vertical axis, so that we draw the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the ellipse at the same time as well. But it's a little bit more complicated because of the layout of CGA video memory. Uh, basically, each pixel is packed into two bits within a byte in video RAM, and it's not the case that a pixel on the right-hand side is in the same position within a byte as the corresponding pixel on the left-hand side of the ellipse. And so, at the very least, if we do this reflection, we'd need to keep track of some additional information uh, between the two sides of the ellipse. And we're still out of registers, so this will mean additional memory variables. And the question is whether the additional overhead of loading these variables all the time is going to outweigh the savings that we'd get from not having to compute the points twice. So that's what we're going to find out in today's video. I've written some code to actually try this out, and we're actually going to time this and see if it makes a difference. Well, this is the new code. It's ellipse6.asm, which you can find in the repository at the link in the description. And the first thing that we need to do here is to allocate some memory variables for the pixel on the left-hand side of the ellipse. Remember that when we're drawing a pixel, uh, there's two pieces of information we're keeping track of. One is the offset within video RAM where that pixel is being written, and the other is a mask byte to mask off the two bits within that byte uh, that we're actually going to modify. Now, for the right hand side of the ellipse, we're already keeping track of that information in process of registers, but we're out of registers, so for the left hand side, we'll need some additional variables to store that information. So we'll need an additional word for the offset of the pixel on the left hand side and an additional byte for the mask byte. And so that's what those two lines of code are for. Now as for the actual ellipse drawing routine, uh, we do get an early saving. So I'll just scroll down to here. Uh, this is where we were doing some self-modifying code. We're actually writing some constants right into the code uh, where they're actually needed. But uh, previously, we had uh, the code for drawing the right-hand side of the ellipse completely duplicated to draw the left-hand side. And so we had twice as many uh, places that we had to write these constants in. Uh, so we've actually got a little bit of a saving here, but unfortunately this is only in the lead-in code, which is only run once. It's not in a main loop or something like that. So it's not going to be much of a saving, unfortunately. Now, the next thing we need to do is to compute the coordinates of the point uh, that we're starting at on the left-hand side of the ellipse. For the right-hand side, uh, the x-coordinate starts at x0 plus r, and for the corresponding pixel on the left-hand side, it has x-coordinate x0 minus r. So basically, we just compute both of those at the same time. And from this information, there's two things we need to compute. We need to compute a mask byte, and we need to compute an offset within video RAM of those pixels. And this is basically just going to involve duplicating the code that we already had for the right-hand side. So here's the corresponding code to compute the mask byte for the left-hand pixel. 
Uh, it's exactly the same as what I had for the right hand side previously. And once I've done the computation of this mask byte, I save it into that variable that we created in memory for the left hand mask byte. And uh, similarly for the offset, uh, down here we computed the offset for the right hand side and I've just added in some additional code to compute the offset for the left hand side at the same time. The code's very similar, basically I use the DI register to compute the offset for the right hand side and the SI register to do the corresponding computation for the offset of the left hand side. And once I've computed that, uh, then a little bit further down here, I'll save the one for the left-hand side into that word that we created in memory. So that takes care of our mask byte and our offset word for the left-hand pixel, uh, at least for the starting point. Now, the next piece of code is just computing some constants. Uh, that's all exactly the same code, uh, so I'll skip over that. Uh, let's go down to the point where we compute our first pixel. Now this really isn't too bad. Uh, remember that previously we were computing the point on the lower half and the upper half of the ellipse at the same time. So we're actually drawing two pixels at a time already. Uh, so there's the code for one of these and then we use this ellipse diff to change the offset so we get the corresponding point on the upper half of the ellipse and that's the code for that there. Uh, so that's two of the pixels drawn, but now we need to compute uh, the pixels for the left-hand side of the ellipse. Uh, so we're actually going to be drawing four pixels at once here, effectively, uh, because we're both reflecting about the horizontal and the vertical axes. Uh, so this involves uh, switching out the values that we have stored in memory, that mask byte and offset for the left-hand pixels. So I did this just with an exchange instruction. So where I had the mask byte previously and the offset previously, I now just switch out for the ones for the left-hand side of the ellipse. And this doesn't seem too bad. And I just draw the two pixels again uh, using pretty much exactly the same code as what I just used. Once I'm done with these values, then I exchange them again and put them back into memory. And so now the registers will have the values corresponding to the right-hand pixel again. Uh, so that's all there is to it. Uh, and this really doesn't seem too terrible. But as we go along here, you'll start to see that some of the rest of the code uh, causes uh, quite a few additional problems. Let's scroll down just a little bit further here, and some of the code doesn't need to be changed. Uh, this is code that's just updating the variable d and the variable dy, and these are the bits of code that uh, are actually a saving for us because it's where we're doing the computation of uh, the, the actual points that we're going to be drawing, and uh, this is the same for all four quarters of the ellipse. And so this is actually where we're saving some time because it only needs to be done once. But uh, down here, uh, the next thing we have to do is to increment our Y coordinate. And uh, this does have to be modified because now we need to increment the Y coordinate for the right hand side of the ellipse and for the left hand side. And this means changing the offset. Uh, so what I decided to do here is rather than modify the value directly in memory, uh, first put it into a CPU register. In this case, I decided to put it in the SI register. And so what I do is exchange the value that's currently in SI with the value that's in memory. Uh, SI still has uh, a value in it that's being used, so I need to make sure I save that. And so just by switching these values around, I now have the offset for the left-hand side in the SI register. And you can see that this computation that I do here, uh, I do it exactly the same for the SI and the DI registers. So DI has the offset for the right-hand side, and SI has the offset for the left-hand side. Now, once I've done that, I also need to add the ellipse diff value uh, to the offset. And again, I need to do that for both the right-hand side and the left-hand side. And once I'm done with all of this, I can finally exchange 
the SI register for the memory variable again and put everything back how it was now that we've updated it all. Uh, so this doesn't look too bad on its own. The only problem is that we have to do this sort of thing all through this code. Uh, so let's uh, scan down a little bit further here. Uh, the next thing that we need to do uh, that's different is to decrement the X coordinate. Uh, so here's the code that we had for the right hand side and here's the corresponding code for the left hand side and uh, in order to do this uh, I again decided to move the value that we're modifying here which is the mask byte into a processor register. Now I actually found a little saving here. It turns out that I don't need to do an exchange here because I actually have a free register at this point in the code. I can tell you there's not many places in this code where there is a free register, uh, but this happens to be one of them. Uh, the AL register is free, so I just move the value into AL instead of doing an exchange, uh, which is actually cheaper. And I do the computation uh, to update the mask byte and also the offset, which I update directly in memory. And uh, finally, uh, I put the value for the mask byte back into memory again. Uh, so that's probably the cheapest way that I can do all of this, as far as I can see. Uh, but you can see that uh, there's quite a bit of overhead in doing all of this because writing to and reading from memory is very slow on this machine. Uh, but it gets worse. Uh, down here, we have some code for a 24-bit comparison. Remember that the variables that we're using in this algorithm are 24 bits, so they take up one and a half 16-bit registers. And so when we do a 24-bit comparison, we have some pretty complicated code for that. And the way that we were doing that was with some conditional jump instructions. And uh, basically, uh, these would jump back to the beginning of our loop, uh, back where we were drawing pixels uh, for the next pixels that we have to draw. But you can't do that anymore. And the reason is that these conditional jump instructions can only jump up to 128 bytes roughly in each direction. And now that we've added all that additional code above, uh, the place where we need to jump to at the beginning of our loop is now more than 128 bytes away. In fact, it's significantly more. So what that means is that we can't use the conditional jump instruction to get there anymore. Instead, we first need to conditionally jump down to another point in the code here and then do a long jump. And these long jumps are really pretty expensive. Uh, so this is definitely going to slow things down. And previously, I didn't need to do a conditional jump here because all it was doing was jumping from here to here. Uh, this intervening code wasn't there before, and so you didn't really need to do a jump to get there. Uh, so that's going to slow that down as well. And so this is really looking like quite a mess. Well, I think I've shown you all the different kinds of changes that I need to make. It's just that there are quite a few other places in the code where I need to do the same thing. Uh, so if we scroll down here, I need to decrement Y here. Uh, so there's some code that's duplicated here. And you can see uh, that I managed to get away without an exchange here. Uh, I actually have a free register again, the AX register, so uh, that was a little bit of a saving here, but I'm still swapping out with memory effectively. And a little bit further down, uh, here is where I draw four pixels again, uh, so that's using the same tricks that we already saw. And a little bit further down, we have to decrement the X coordinate, and again, uh, I had a free register so I could use the AL register. But again, uh, I'm still reading and writing to memory at this point. Uh, a little bit further down still, uh, I have an increment of the Y coordinate again, so same problems here. Uh, this time I had to do an exchange, uh, no free registers. And finally, uh, for the bottom of the code here, uh, I actually have to do a comparison again. And so I have to introduce this jump instruction exactly as I had previously. Uh, instead of using these uh, conditional jumps. And that's basically the end of the routine there. So you can see there are really quite a lot of places uh, where I needed to either swap out with memory or change my conditional jumps 
uh, to go via some long jumps. And so this is actually going to be quite a bit more expensive than I would really like. Uh, but let's run this and actually do a comparison. We'll time this compared to what we had last time and see if it actually makes any difference. Now, once again, I'm using Marty PC, uh, which is a cycle accurate emulator of the PC. And so this should give me a good idea of whether or not things are faster. So this is the code that I showed in the previous video. Uh, you can see it draws a nice little circle here. This is an ellipse with a ratio of 6 to 5 to compensate for the fact that the pixels are not square. And then it does a little animation here, blanks the screen. And so now we get to the bit that I'm going to time. And I'll leave this in in full in the video. And if you like, you can actually time this yourself. Uh, you can even uh, do it frame by frame if you want to get a really accurate timing. Uh, so let's start it running, and basically what it's going to do here is draw lots and lots and lots of circles. Uh, in fact, it will go through these color changes 10 times. It should take about 30 seconds to go through, and you can see this is pretty slow. And so what I'm going to do in a moment is run the other version that we just wrote this week, uh, Ellipse 6, and we'll compare it and see whether or not it's faster. So the first thing that you should try to do is get an impression of whether or not it feels faster. Uh, so there's 10 iterations there. Uh, While well, you've got that in mind, let's run Ellipse 6. And so basically it does the same animation, uh, blank screen, and let's go. And it doesn't seem a whole load faster to me. So I don't know whether you can tell a difference there. Uh, unfortunately, I can't. So I actually did a timing of this, and uh, it's something like 30 seconds roughly for uh, Ellipse 5, uh, the one that we had last week, and uh, it's maybe about a second faster uh, with the new code. Uh, so this is only about 3%, which is definitely not something you would actually notice in practice. So this is a really big surprise. Uh, all of that saving, uh, not having to compute the points twice, for the left and right hand side is completely wiped out almost uh, by all the extra overhead of having to read and write those values to memory and deal with those additional long jumps. So anyway, I hope that's been interesting. Uh, in the next video, what I'm going to do is show a way of drawing circles, uh, that is things that actually look circular on the screen, they're actually really ellipses with a ratio of six to five, uh, much faster than what we're currently doing. So, uh, question to you, uh, what could I possibly do uh, that's quicker than what we're already doing? Haven't we already pulled out all the tricks in the book? Well, uh, that's for next video, so hopefully I'll see you then.